It's hard to walk on water when you're stranded on a desert planet, but that does not stop Trigun from having its own Jesus, Vash, H, Stampede Christ, carrier of sins, and immortal angel that follows a path of righteousness, love, and peace. That's right, we're going biblical, but don't worry, this isn't preachy. I am all for melting down the Vatican and using it to feed the poor. It just so happens that Trigun, believe it or not, was written by a devout Catholic. In Vash's wake lies death and destruction, but, you know, Jesus disrupted the peace too, didn't he? He was condemned to death for partaking of the power and authority of God himself and also calling himself king of the Jews. The Jews did not like that. And so he atoned for humanity's sins all at once by dying on the cross. God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. John 3, 17, that's right, I quoted the Bible. Vash's entire personality, backstory, and character development are based around this same idea that he must save humanity from itself, bear our cumulative sins and atone for them. When it comes to anime, I cannot think of another character that is so directly a metaphor for Jesus H. Christ himself. Mostly because I try not to consume Christian media, except that time that I really liked Under Oath. Their only chasing safety is a really good album, okay? But if you dig into the blatant Christian overtones of the show, I mean, there's a fucking cross-shaped rocket launcher filled with mercy for fuck's sake, all right? It becomes apparent that Trigun's story is on par with the likes of Angel's Egg in terms of religion religious allegory. Trigun is well known as one of the big three sci-fi western anime that came out in 1998, but it's fair to say that Trigun is definitely the black sheep of the three, and I think part of that is because its themes are uncomfortably hard-hitting. The show takes the idea of morality, specifically killing, and not only asks the audience if it's sometimes necessary and unavoidable, but if it's morally acceptable in the eyes of capital G, God. Then it throws Vash through a gauntlet of traumatic experiences and forces him to make the choice of who should die. Trigun is a test of your morality when faced with an unfair situation. When the fifth commandment is, thou shall not kill, are you still redeemable in the eyes of God when you kill to save somebody else? Is that a rule break or a bend? How do you know when you've atoned for your sins? Or is there ever really true salvation from our mistakes? Trigun is the story of three men broken in different ways, metaphors for different aspects of religion and their combined journey to salvation. This is Trigun. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Mike here. I just wanted to thank everybody who has joined the Patreon so far in order to help us make better videos at a faster pace than we have ever before. We are working to get to the 6K mark on Patreon with the hope that it will sustain Tyler and I while allowing us to pay everyone who works under us a fair wage for their time and effort. And I'll be real with you right now, the only reason we can hire editors is because of our G Fuel partnership, but that may not last forever. We are a smaller channel and therefore we don't have the kind of reach that that somebody like Mother's Basement or The Completionist does with their G Fuel sponsorship. It would also be nice to not rely on any company to produce our content anyway, so we are in a race against time to bring the Patreon up to a point that it can support us and our editors without G Fuel. Even though we would very much like to keep this excellent partnership going, codes be pop by the way if G Fuel is a drink of your choice. But if you look at Bonsai Pop, you can tell we make what we want, and it's never about trending topics or getting views, it's about bringing you the content that we think is important and that you like. So we'll likely never hit enough views per video to keep the channel alive solely through ad revenue. I mean, we aren't right now, that's for sure. That's why we are asking for your help. Your support is what makes Bonsai Pop successful, not the videos, not the subscribers, the people who step up and decide that what we make is worth supporting, worth keeping online, that the messages we try to put out there are important. So if this sounds right to you and you have the means, please consider joining the Patreon and helping to keep Bonsai Pop alive and thriving. Now back to it. Just so you know, I wrote this video with the intention that you've already seen Trigun. If you haven't seen Trigun, why do you hate yourself? Anyway, this video isn't going to explain a ton of the plot. I'm assuming you know it, so let's just get right into it. Vash the Stampede is an angel who views himself as a demon, and when you break down his character to the bare essentials, he's a good person who can only see the bad in himself and unneededly thrusts the weight of every unfortunate event on his own shoulders. No matter how many people he saves, no matter how the situation arose, if people died, he 
burdens himself with the guilt of their losses. This self-hatred, regret, and need to atone at every possible moment stems from two catalysts, the July incident and his brother Knives. Knives is the entire reason the planet Gunsmoke is inhabited by humans in the first place. He sabotaged the seed ships with the intention of killing every human on board so that Knives and Vash could create a paradise on the planet without human involvement. It's only due to the selfless sacrifice of Rem Savrem, Vash's early life mentor and caretaker, that the seed ships corrected their flight path and the humans aboard survived. The single dying act is continually brought up in Vash's mind, and I believe it's the foundation for Vash's need to constantly throw himself in harm's way for the sake of others. Rem's words, no one has the right to take the life of another. This is why he would rather bring himself to the brink of death instead of killing those who look to cause pain to innocent civilians. And this philosophy of pacifism is cemented by the July incident, a reunion of Vash and Knives over a hundred years after they initially landed on Gunsmoke, where Vash's angel's arm activates for the first time, destroying the entire town. Now there was no one in the town at the time, Vash didn't directly kill people, but the number of citizens who lost their homes and died in the desert via hydration, starvation, or heat stroke is unknown. So Vash's consciousness is heavy with an unknown number of losses that he believes are completely his fault despite Knives having been the one that made the incident occur. So in an effort to atone for his sins, he travels around the planet trying to help and save people, and he does. He's not perfect, people get hurt, towns get destroyed, innocents die, far less than if Vash hadn't been there, but because all these horrific events are happening around him, Vash gets blamed for the majority of them. Again, in an allegory for Jesus, Vash unfairly places the weight of these sins on himself and forces himself through an unending process of atonement for the actions of others. So we have an immortal man from a virgin birth who bears the sins of an entire planet and is on an endless quest to atone for humanity's sins without any other option for salvation available in his mind. He's essentially taken on an unfinishable quest, a role that he will always come up short on. Therefore, he can never forgive himself and allow his own sins to be washed away. Way. The lengths at which he's willing to take these ideas in the anime are arguably self-abuse, yet he believes that this sacrifice is worth it. That humanity is worth his inability to ever achieve salvation and, perhaps, that he doesn't deserve to be happy. That he's done too much wrong to find peace. Now the flip side to Vash is Knives, an immortal being just like Vash, yet there's obvious differences in morality to say the least. First off, Knives detests humanity and sees this as nothing more than a parasite and mistake. He wants to rid gun smoke of humans entirely and in doing so create a paradise for just him and Vash, the quote unquote superior beings. Which is kind of interesting, maybe that's a little bit of a back to Adam and Eve kind of thing. Anyway, to achieve his goal, Knives assembled a team of assassins named the Gung Ho Guns, and their entire purpose is to break Vash mentally by forcing him into a situation where he must kill or be killed. Eventually they switch this tactic, realizing that Vash doesn't have much care for self-preservation, and instead begin killing innocents to force Vash into killing one of the Gung Ho Guns in order to stop them. This escalates with Vash having to choose between killing Legato to save Meryl and Millie, or letting them die to retain his ideals, and in a moment of massive pain, he breaks his pacifist code, making the right choice, but causing an immense amount of psychological trauma and pain in the process. He had defined his persona on pacifism, breaking it literally breaks Vash's character and takes him a lot of time and support to recover from that choice. The entire point of making Vash choose who dies is to force him to confront the fact that pacifism doesn't always work. Up until that point, he'd always found another way around, a way without killing. Legato's death is when reality sets in. Even Jesus can't save everyone. And that's why people go to hell. Speaking of the bad place, Knives represents Satan in the show. He harbors the ideas of temptation, abuse of power, lack of empathy for those weaker than you, and destruction. Of course, this is biblical Satan, not the church Satan, Satan, it's a different thing. There's a massive amount of symbolism to back up this idea of Knives playing the devil, right? For example, Satan is considered a fallen angel, a son of God who fell from grace. Yet he still holds power over hell and a host of demons. Knives is another immortal who controls the gung-ho guns, all of whom have magical or special unexplained powers, and one of those powers is even called the demon's eye. It's the perfect metaphor for Satan and his army. Knives also has 
has the angel's arm ability, but unlike Vash's white and blue accented angel arm, his is black and red to symbolize that corruption and fall from purity. The color of an angel's wings is often used in media to show their heavenly standing. For instance, the show Lucifer makes good use of this, having Lucifer's wings as black and devil-like at first, only to become white and angelic over time as he begins to see himself as good rather than evil. We see the same thing as Knives' angel arm is decked out with black angel wings, whereas Vash's are much more angelic in nature. But I think the most prominent comparison to Christianity's devil is the parallels of temptation. The devil is supposed to cloud your judgment and tempt you onto the wrong path. He's supposed to make you want to sin, making it difficult to know what's right versus wrong. And we see this exact struggle in Nicholas D. Wolfwood. Now, Wolfwood is literally a priest, just not a good one, which makes him very realistic. It's really more of just a cover up for the fact that he's secretly working for knives, yet he does seem to care about his faith or lack thereof. As the show carries on, he continually butts heads with Bash on his pacifist ideals, calling them naive. And this escalates to a point where Wolfwood kills a kid who was a gung ho gun, despite Bash trying to find an alternative solution. Bash yells at him, distraught by his quick trigger finger, but Wolfwood argues that if he hadn't done what he did, Vash would be dead in the dirt. Wolfwood believes in the idea that you cannot save all the people all the time. He's pragmatic in his decisions, which is a complete foil to Vash's idealism. He learned to take action first to survive from a young age when he killed his own asshole of a guardian that was abusing him. But somewhat ironically, considering Vash is literally labeled a walking natural disaster, Vash plays the role of Jesus and brings Wolfwood back from the devil's grip to rekindle his faith. You see, before venturing with Vash, Wolfwood saw himself as unsavable. His list of crimes is too long, his sins are too harsh, but then he watched this man, hated by an entire planet, hunted by demons, and psychologically crushed by the weight of others' actions, continue to put the needs of everyone over himself and find pacifist solutions to unwinnable problems. It's something we see again and again with the people who get close to Vash. Despite the turmoil in his soul, his ideals are infectious. His success makes people want to believe that killing isn't ever the answer and eventually brings Wolfwood back into the light, into grace, if you will. Wolfwood is symbolic of all of humanity having an angel and a devil on their shoulder, Vash and Knives. He's caught between two immortal beings, one representing Satanhood and idealism, and the other temptation and pragmatism. And we know that there are ways we can be better than we are, right? Yet it isn't always practical in the real world. Speaking out about things that are important may be the right thing to do, but YouTube could also flick you in your left testicle. So should we take the higher road even if it doesn't always work out? Or do we ensure we survive, albeit by immoral methods? This is the struggle Wolfwood weighs throughout the show and always chooses to survive first. But in his final battle, instead of killing his former mentor, Wolfwood lowers his gun, a gesture showing that he's finally come to terms with Vash's idea of faith because here's the thing, we don't know where a choice will take us until we make it. How can you possibly know if a person will decide not to shoot you if you shoot them first? Vash lives his life with hope for each and every person. He hopes they'll make the right choices and has faith that they will, and he's willing to put his life on the line each and every time to support that faith. Wolfwood has spent his entire life expecting the worst from people, so he never gave anyone the choice to shoot or not. That is the primary difference between the two gunslingers. One has faith in humanity, the other simply doesn't. But Wolfwood lowers his gun and gives his mentor a chance to kill him. He puts his faith in Chapel, which is his, his mentor's name is Chapel, I know, it's a little on the nose, and is rewarded for believing in humanity for the first time in his life. As a metaphorical icing on the cake, Wolfwood takes Chapel's apple and takes a bite. In the Old Testament, obviously an apple symbolizes the fall of man, but in the New Testament, the apple is an emblem of redemption from that fall. This scene is showing Wolfwood achieving his redemption, regaining his faith, and fully embracing the goodness that Vash offers. In a sense, Vash literally converts Wolfwood to a new faith. I keep telling you, the dude is the most Jesus dude to ever anime as a dude. However, Legato uses mind control and forces Chapel's body to shoot Wolfwood, and Wolfwood finds Vash distraught over not saving someone yet again and tells him he needs to forgive himself. We are not perfect. We all make mistakes. Allow yourself to be forgiven. He's giving the advice that speaks to what he's about to do for himself. Those are the last words he gives Vash and leaves a trail of blood in his wake. The next scene is Wolfwood opening the doors to a church and beginning his 
his first and last confession. The scene is lit with radiant light casting Wolfwood's shadow as a man hunched over from carrying the burden of the cross for so long. He confesses his sins of killing countless people, always to protect the children of his orphanage or for the better good, not realizing there was ever another way. Vash's way. He says that his sins are too heavy to ever atone for, yet today he feels at peace. This is a man of contradictions and those paradoxes weigh so heavily on him, he's unsure if he can ever be forgiven for who he is and what he's done. He's a priest and a gunslinger, an orphanage owner and a killer, a hero and a villain all at once, and yet for the first time in his life, he asks for forgiveness, which is a big deal for churchy people. Unfortunately, he then goes on to say that he doesn't want to die because there's so much left to accomplish. But in the manga, he dies content and at peace knowing that he saved others, even if he had to sacrifice himself to do it. I find this to be more in line with the theming of the show, but even in the anime, knowing that he finally understands and wants to continue seeing this world in a new light, it's heartbreaking. It's understanding what's important to you after it's too late. And honestly, this part hits you in the gut every single time. No matter which ending you prefer, Wolfwood died protecting Vash's ideals and died with more peace in his soul than he ever had before. In the final episode, his voice reaches Vash at a critical moment, saving him and helping Vash beat knives, and you can kind of look at this as confirmation that Wolfwood was forgiven and achieved the salvation that he wanted and is now watching over Vash from above. Trigon is truly the allegory of the devil and god rage inside me, and that entire contest is boiled down to these three characters, but it's quite unusual to see this much Christian symbolism in anime. In general, Christianity isn't typically a main talking point for anime, it's generally overshadowed by Buddhism and Shintoism, but Yasuhiro Naitao, the creator of Trigun, is considered one of the very few successful Christian mangaka. When I was researching for this video, what I learned was a bit more complex than devout Catholic makes good manga. Naitao grew up Buddhist, he studied and eventually converted to Christianity while retaining those Buddhist principles. Yet if you try to find any mention of him actually talking about being a devout Catholic, you'll come up empty. In fact, in an interview back in 2009, he was asked about Trigon's moral themes and whether they are based on his religious views. And he and his translator replied, Naitao doesn't follow a religion, quote, maybe I'm just a great person. While this is kind of a quirky response, like okay dude, I'm sure you do a lot of mitzvahs, it also reflects how Naitao feels about religion. You can have faith and not be religious. Faith doesn't need to conform to a belief system. Trigon is obviously created with spiritual and religious symbolism in mind, but the real message that the symbolism is driving towards isn't about God or Satan or prayer or anything truly religious at all. The entire point of Trigon is to reinstill your faith in humanity. And honestly, Twitter selling out to Elon Musk, that's a big hit for me, okay? Faith is uh, its uh, pretty low right now. But Trigon is trying to show that believing the worst in others is a darker path that will lead you astray from helping make the world that most of us want. Trigon is a show about a harsh planet filled with villains and hardship, but little in terms of support or protection. The story isn't about Vash finding himself and stopping knives. In fact, that's a very small section of the show overall. The majority of Trigon is about learning that it's okay to put your faith in other people, that making mistakes is a part of life, that people who make mistakes deserve second chances. We don't live in the wild west anymore. I mean, we are in the west and it is wild, but the problems in Trigun aren't anywhere close to the issues that we deal with every day. But the messaging still rings true. Grow from your mistakes, for we are all mortals and we all have the capacity to know the eventuality of wrongdoing. But wrongdoing does not make you evil. Continuing to do wrong after realizing your mistakes separates the good from the bad. This is the meaning I found behind Vash and Wolfwood's relationship. It's never too late to find your faith, to learn from your mistakes and not let them hold you back. And if you take the time to grow, maybe you'll find some inner peace too. Signed, an atheist and a Jew. Hey everybody, thanks so much for making it to the end of this little video on Trigun. If you like this video, I definitely recommend checking out a couple more. And if you like those videos, why not subscribe? As always at the end, I like to thank one of our high tier patrons. This week, it is going to be Luthi the Zombie Biker and our lucky patron of the week, Broom3. If you've been enjoying our content lately and you're enjoying our pace that we're putting out content, please think about joining the Patreon. It really does help. Otherwise, follow us on various social media for updates and whatnot. Google us, do your thing. As always, I'm Mike. This is Bonsai Pop. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.